Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Shots with Profanis. One of the amazing Angular 14 features is the standalone components. In this video, we will see what the standalone components is all about. So, let's get started. For this video, I have prepared a simple application and what we can see is that we have the dashboard, we have the products, the users and the users charts. In the products, I have just the product works, no more than this. In the users, I have the material button. And also in the users charts, I have this chart, bar chart from PrimeNG. Let's go to VS Code to see what we have. All we have here is in the app module, we have the users module and the product module. Having said that, we have two different features, the users and the products. If we open the products, we have the products module here, where we are importing the products routing module. And the products routing module is this. We have the path products and we are defining that we want to load this component. And if we go to users, again in the users module, we have into the declarations the users list component and the users charts component, and we are importing the user routing module, the math button module, and the chart module. And of course, then we have the user routing module where we have this configuration. This is no more than a standard application without using anything about standalone components. Progressively, we will try to convert this application using standalone components. So let's start first with the products. So let's close this and open the products module. Here in the products module, we have the common module and the product routing module. Let's skip this for now and let's go to the products component. And what we will do is to set the standalone equals to true. If we have them side by side, we will see that here into the import we have the common module. But you know what? I will skip this for now. I won't import anything because I have very simple template and I do not use anything that has to do with common module. So it seems that it's safe to delete the products module, right? So let's delete this. And let's go to the app module. We have to change this reference, the product module no longer exist. But you know what? What we currently have is the following. Let me draw this for you. We have our application and we also have here a different, a standalone feature, which is the product. And we need somehow to link them together. The feature module with the actual application. How can we do this? We will do this by using the product routing module. So I will import the product routing module directly into our application, into the app module. Let's do this here. Product routing module. Nice. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. If I click products, everything works well. So let's now continue and try to use standalone components for users. And here we have the users chart and the users list. Let's close everything. And open first the user list. User list component and also I will have side by side the users module. The question here is what are the dependencies of this users list component? This depends on a material button. So first, let's use the standalone to true. And also, we need to have here the imports array. And we have to define the imports that this component requires. And this one requires the mat button module. So let's use it here. And we will import this. Now let's go to the other one, to the user's charts and again have them side by side and I will do the same thing. I will use the standalone flag, I will set it to true and we need also to have the imports array where we have to import the chart module because this is the only dependency that this component has. 
this component do not require the common module, this component do not require the math button module. So now it seems safe that we can delete the user's module. So let's close this and let's go to Explorer and delete the user's module. Similar to the products, we have our application here and now we have the user's feature and we need somehow to link them together. How can we do this? Let's go to the app module and instead of using the user's module, which of course we have deleted, we will do user's list, sorry, user routing module. So we have the user routing module and also we have the product routing module. Let's now go to our application and see what we have. If we click products, everything works well. If we click users, we have the button here. And if we click charts, we have the charts. Nice. So everything seems to work fine. Now let's think the following. How about if I want to create one more component inside users, a standalone component, and this will be used inside from users charts. So let's create one more component and I will name it NGGC. This is going to be the user details. Let's see what options do we have to use. Uh, I want to use, let's see, the standalone skip tests and also inline template and inline style. We have just created only one file. Let's go again to the Explorer and this is it, the user details. If we open and see the details, we have into the imports the common module, which is the default, and into the standalone, we have the flag true. Nice. Now let's do the following. This is the user details component and the goal of this component is to be used into the charts. Let's grab the selector. Let's go to the user charts and say that we're going to use it here. Since this is a standalone component, in order to use it into the charts, we have to define it, we have actually to import it. So let's go to the user charts and inside the imports, I will use the user details component. And this is it. Let's go to the browser to see what we have. In the user charts, we see the user detail works. So despite that this is a component, if we have marked it as a standalone true, we have to import it in the imports array. Now let's think the following. We have the products and we have the users. In our application, we might have two different users, the user A and the user B. The flow that the user A will follow, most probably, will be uh, he will visit the products and then he will visit the users, the users list, and then the user will visit also the user charts. The other user most probably will visit only the products. And perhaps we will have another user here. Let's say that we have the user C. And this user's flow is to visit only the users. So here we have a question. Why do we need at the first place to load everything eagerly into our application? The only happy user is the user A. So this is a happy user and the B and C are not happy users. And the reason is that for the user B, we have already loaded the users and especially we have already loaded the user's charts. And same for the user C. We have loaded for him the products, but you know what? This user is not interesting about visiting the products. So let's try to make them happy. To make them happy, let's start with the products. We will go to the products routing module and we will change this routing configuration. Instead of using the component, we will use the load not children, the load component. 
So the load component is used whenever we want to lazy load a standalone component. And here we have to define the path. And the path for the product component is product component. And this is a promise. So we will use the product component. Now let's do the same for the users. Again, into the users routing module, we have the users list and the users charts. Let's start with the users list. And I will use here load component. And I will import, let's define the path. This is the users list. Users list component. This is a promise. So we have to define the users list component. And let's do the same for the charts. Load component. And the same. Import. Let's define the path. Users charts. Users charts component. And then we have to select the users chart component. So what we have is that Whenever a user asks for users, we will lazy load this component. Whenever a user asks for users charts, we will lazy load this component. Let's kill the server and rerun it. And let's go to the browser to see what we have. First and foremost, when we build the application, we see that we have the initial chunk files and also we have the lazy chunk files, which is the user charts the user's list, and also the products. Now, let's go to the browser to see what we have. Let's start with the dashboard. I will reload the browser. And let's go to the network and click products. We have just downloaded the products component. And if we go to users, we have just downloaded the user's list component. And the same goes with the charts, which is the heavier component that we have in this application. So this is how we manage to make all users, all three users, A, B, and C, make them happy. We are loading the components lazily and not eagerly. So that was it. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.